Hey, what's going on, folks? It is the Earthmaster back here. I was going to say Monday, but it's Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. I know yesterday was a holiday. About 8.52 a.m. here, California time, latest activity. Uh, shows a 2.2 up here into Alaska. We have been seeing a little bit of activity overnight here just off the coast of Taiwan. Uh, the USGS reporting a couple earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Um, and more specifically, right around... Uh, about five to six o'clock my time here california has seen a couple fours and even a five pointer here just off the coast of taiwan uh, now this area does see some earthquake activity um it's been a little while since we've seen any larger movement but uh, i pulled up the last year of activity here 5.0 and above and you can see um looks like back in uh, October of last year, they had a 5.9 in this region. So a slight uptick across this area today. And um, again, this is a fairly common earthquake activity there in that region. But we'll keep an eye on it. The general plate movement out there uh, does show uh, this area uh, in this region right here showing a, kind of a subduction zone here just up to the north and to the east here of the Taiwan area. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, maybe for some further movement. Uh, what else is going on out here across the globe here? Let's check out the largest earthquake activity here in the last 24 hours. Looks like the uh, five-pointer up there in China, 5.1 this morning. Uh, so far the largest today. I uh, did see a couple fives again yesterday uh, scattered out and about around the South Sandwich Islands and also down here across the Nazca Plate. And the Cocos plate boundary here, just off of that plate boundary. Uh, looks like that's near the uh, Carnegie Ridge area. And most of the time we do see some uh, elevated movement following activity like that, uh, which was noted up here around the Columbia area, but it doesn't look like we've seen anything uh, further uh, so far today. South America region calming down slightly there from yesterday. Uh, about the same there across the Middle America Trench. It looks like a lot of earthquake activity, but this is very common for the uh, Middle America Trench. Quite a few threes and fours out there. I uh, did see a 3.5 down here in the, uh, or up here in the Gulf of California once again. Um, USGS, I don't think picking up on that earthquake, but the EMSC model is. Still kind of keeping an eye here along the plate boundary up across California. Uh, Southern California looks fairly quiet. Uh, we have noticed a little bit of uptick here across northern california and specifically around the bay area although most of this movement here uh, is from yesterday uh, looks like northern california here had a uh, somewhat of a deep earthquake here into the cascadia subduction zone a 2.3 from yesterday uh, aside from that um, you know looking at the bigger picture out here across the west coast Aside from a lot of rain, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity popping off here for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, let's see what we got. Uh, a couple of earthquakes being reported there yesterday. I'm, I guess they're getting to them. Well, maybe they got to two earthquakes. Uh, let's see, 1.5 and a 1.1. Let's check out the uh, seismograph stations there. Uh, the majority of that activity, let's see, when did they put those up there? 21, 29, and 1750, so... Technically, that would still be in the 24-hour map. So the one that I'm seeing is probably going to be uh, maybe a couple of these earthquakes that they're reporting. But uh, previous, though, on the previous day, uh, they did have a little bit more earthquake activity um, across the area. Let's see where where to go. Uh, when I checked last night, they had a, a pretty uh, decent amount of earthquake activity. Hmm, where did it go? It disappeared. That's a little odd. I'm going to have to go back and make sure I wasn't uh, dreaming about this, but um, I'm pretty certain that they had a little bit of earthquake activity up here yesterday when I did the update. All right, well, uh, aside from that, mostly, uh, you know, mostly quiet conditions prevailing out there across the Yellowstone area for now, uh, aside from a handful of smaller quakes out there. All right through the uh, rest of the country uh, looks like oklahoma still seeing some movement down here across the fall city area this has been a source of uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity recently uh, including uh, a decent earthquake 4.7 
about four or five days ago here. Uh, there's quite a bit of oil fields out here in this vicinity of Texas. Anywhere you go, pretty much in Texas, there's lots of uh, oil pumping operations and whatnot. So these earthquakes striking uh, literally within feet of these little checkered boxes, uh, which are some holding tanks out here. You can see some of those holding tanks and uh, some wastewater disposal uh, facilities as well. So it looks like they did see a, a 3.2 here yesterday and also a 3.4. So things are still kind of stirring up out here across Texas. Not a whole lot there across the New Madrid seismic zone or the eastern portion of the country for now. Puerto Rico trench area showing a handful of smaller quakes. And uh, what else we got out here? Looks like New Zealand still rocking and rolling slightly. There's that 4.1 pretty deep down here underneath the north island 121 kilometers deep now that area is definitely a concern right we do have uh, numerous fault systems that are well overdue and um, the hikarangi subduction zone that sits just offshore uh, and of course extends underneath the north island there you get that subduction zone that uh, is a uh, culprit of some large past or uh, past large earthquakes there and we're talking about well above a seven um, so we'll continue to watch that. This deeper activity has been um, of interest here recently across the North Island area of New Zealand. I'm just checking out the uh, seismograph stations out here. Here's some of that earthquake activity it looks like in the last 24 hours. Uh, a lot of that though is, um, looks like it's up around the Kermadec Trench area. Some of these northern stations uh, picking up some of that activity. As uh, far as the surface levels go, looks like South Island had an earthquake there about uh, eight or so hours ago. Let's see which one that was. Uh, one of these out here. Quite a few earthquakes. These are all uh, very small microquakes. But uh, needless to say, these are still earthquakes. So I'm looking for that South Island one. There's 2.1, 3.5. Looks like that may be it down here. Uh, just off the alpine fault it's what i'm what i'm guessing there looks like um and there's a couple different sites out here uh, one could go to uh, to monitor the earthquake activity you got the geoquakes or geonet and also the uh, nzquakes.com which is new zealand quakes uh, run here by timothy our moderator on the channel uh, pretty simple layout here in terms of uh, looking at all the earthquake activity and uh Looks like the strongest quake in this area here uh, in the last 24 hours is at 4.6. Um, 4.6 right about uh, here in the Kermadec Trench, 312 kilometers deep. So fairly deep earthquake. Either way, we'll keep an eye on this. Definitely showing some, um, some movement out there. And that is showing up on the Earthquake 3D Globe as well. There's that 3.4 South Island area. Uh, the rest of the area up north around the Fiji region is fairly quiet. Quiet here across Solomon Islands until we get over here. It does look like quite a bit of clustering going on here across the Taiwan area southward. So we will continue to watch that maybe for some further movement uh, across the rest of the globe here. Mediterranean area still seeing some twos and threes out here. Stretching from this area all across the, the uh, I was going to say Texas, but Turkey area out here. The Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot showing up here, uh, at least for now. And the Hawaii area does look like we're seeing a few earthquakes out there on the globe. Um, but on the USGS map here, we got about nine earthquakes. And that's very common out here. There's not a whole lot of uh, um, interesting movement right now taking place. I was just looking at the uh, seismograph stations out here across the Kilauea Volcano, which is currently uh, not erupting here. And um, some of these seismograph stations, uh oh, is this thing going to work for me? Sometimes, I don't know what's going on here with this. Let me go back over here and key this one up. I think it might be a little technical issue with the, uh, the other browser I'm using. But uh, this one seems to work okay. Um, but yeah, past 12 hours or so, looks fairly quiet. You guys see that? What's going on with that? <laughs> Literally just reset me and took me to their main website. So I'm not for sure what's going on with that. Oh, now it looks a little different. That's a little weird. Um, 
220 today's date 1545 UTC time uh, looks like we're behind here a couple hours um, far as the data goes uh, but either way there's a, a small amount of earthquake activity here across the area of the uh, Hawaii region the tilt meters up here across the area not showing a whole lot of inflation there across the volcano for now uh, and we're still at a very low level compared to our previous uh, run up there of inflation at the summit area uh, quite a bit of displacement of magma occurred right about this date very obvious across the graph and we haven't really even seen any uh, further push up of magma it's all just kind of leveling off here so we'll continue to watch that but uh, for the most part seismograph stations out here are fairly quiet going to check uh, that one's offline yeah this one looks fairly quiet as well but uh, missing a couple hours there hopefully they'll get that back up and running all right uh, what else we got let's go check out Iceland take a trip up here to Iceland see what's going on as far as earthquake activity goes looks like about 48 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours I uh, really no uptick uh, this is just very common not seeing any major swarming there's a little bit of swarming going on here across this rift zone uh, away from the Grindavik area uh, down here across this latest or the uh, area that's seen the latest eruptive activity uh, is fairly quiet a handful of smaller quakes but we'll continue to watch that uh, the elevated GPS there in the region um, lately let's see what it's doing today we're still kind of peeking up here a little bit uh, we did level out here yesterday and the day before but it looks like we're starting to go back up here in terms of inflation there at the uh, Savart Singhi area so we'll continue to watch that and of course you know looking for earthquake activity out here across the rift zones that would be a key indicator of maybe some increasing uh, magma push from below uh, to stir up the regions out here outside the Grindavik area uh, once again but uh, we'll continue to watch that not a whole lot going on though for now all right uh, what else we got space weather activity got a uh, fairly massive sunspot region coming around uh, let's see what it looks like today it's going to be 3590 the latest imagery here of the magnetogram let's see if it's going to pop up there we go uh, it does show a large area fairly decent uh, for the most part though this area the core of it looks fairly stable uh, but we got to watch maybe for some further strengthening and complexity uh, in the days ahead as this uh, rotates further into the earth directed view the rest of these sunspots out here not a whole lot going on with them they're it pretty much looks like they're dying and decaying but uh, we'll watch this one see if that wants to become a um, an active region right now current flare threat shows a 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 30 x flare around five percent chance or so and a little bit of a proton potential there at about five percent uh, not a whole lot there in terms of the aurora forecast for now but uh, hopefully things will change here soon. Uh, the UV filter ray here does show some bright, at least on the bright uh, side of things for the UV filter here across that active region. Uh, again, we'll continue to watch it, see if it gets its act together and maybe produces some flaring here in the days ahead. Uh, far as severe weather goes, well, not a whole lot going on here in terms of uh, severe weather out here across California or anywhere. Um, a lot different story here today just generalized thunderstorm activity across the uh, California region and that is due in uh, mainly due to this low pressure system that's spinning off the coast here uh, looks like it's up around the Oregon area right now weakening uh, it's definitely losing its um, its area of cir circulation up here but it's still able to pull in uh, some moisture here off the Pacific creating some convective showers here across the area today there's that atmospheric river that everyone talks about hitting the southern california area uh, so this low pressure system still tapping into that as well providing southern california with some rainfall um, the patterns let's see what we got for the patterns out here as we head into um, the end of february i want to check out the jet stream out here across the pacific and see what's going on North Pacific, where you want to check out the um, uh, 
upper air dynamics and this right here will show our jet stream look at that jet stream right there that's the uh, uh the atmospheric ri atmospheric river right there that is going to change a little bit here over the coming days uh looks like we may start to get a split there in the jet stream not see that one going down south one up north here there's still a cutoff low that may be uh spinning some rain there in the southern california around the 24th or so but uh yeah that's really not what you want to see here for for further wet weather out here across the west coast is a split stream But yeah, we'll definitely watch that. I want to check out the uh, GFS model here in terms of rainfall out here across California. There's that system that's just going by. Uh, looks like maybe our next potential system will be in uh, around the 25th to 26th time period. Doesn't look like a big system at all. That's kind of definitely uh, looks loosely organized. Uh, the previous model runs did show quite a bit of activity out here, but it looks like things are not going to come together uh, for the uh, for that storm system. But as we head into March, it looks like we may return back to an active pattern here across the West Coast with more rain and snow out there uh, in the area. Now there's some chances of uh, severe weather, I think, out here across. Uh, let's see if the Storm Prediction Center is, uh, has anything up here. Uh, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight. Doesn't look like it. Uh, but there was some talk about some severe weather coming up here uh, eventually for this area. But uh, right now they're not really showing anything. So we'll continue to watch that and uh, check back on it. All right, folks. Uh, what else we got? Anything else going on here? Seismograph stations look fairly calm. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot going on here across the area for now. But... Uh, Again, things can change. A couple areas to watch, of course, is around the Taiwan area uh, with that elevated movement right here across the area. It's good to watch the plate boundary here across the western edge here of the Filipino plate. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that today. Have a good one. Um, Tuesday. It just kind of feels like an off day. It feels like a Monday, but it's Tuesday. All right. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, nightly update. Take care, folks, and stay safe.